G'day folks, it's a nice little uh, Wednesday afternoon, keeping warm and also got some uh, bits done today. I'm also filming under fluoro lights and 1000 watts of halogen. They also make nice heat lamps, um, so it also helps warm me up, which is good because it was freezing this morning when I walked to work and uh, subsequently drove home this afternoon with my RAV4, which is back in the carport. Brilliant. Um, as you can see, I've done a key slot. I didn't even have the key stock when I did it, and I'm quite surprised that it's going to be a nice little snug tap-in fit. That's pretty damn good. But I did use the chart on the side of the um, box, and it was 9.7 for 3 8 So it's 3 8 by 3 8 square. I did end up buying some of this for another little job. That's um, 5 16 I think that was about 6 95 That was about 11 so with a set of drills, it's about forty something dollars. Those were, you know, almost fifty dollars. Those uh, drills were thirty eight, thirty nine dollars, and apparently they've sold well over a hundred sets. And people just keep coming back for more because they're they're actually quite good. Uh, is it Saber Precision Tools? They're just normal bright metricated drills, four point five, three point five. You've got a few fractions, and then the main sizes. 7.5, 11.5, yeah they go up in half mil increments so that's really good they do look a bit cheap but still for hobby DIY use they're good and even they reckon a lot of the customers are trade and uh, industrial users so I'm not going to complain about that also got a bearing that's the make, make or model there 6308 LLU uh, I did turn this down just to fit through the uh, bell housing as a clearance. I wasn't anticipating another bearing, but it's that damn close. I have to bring this shoulder back another 10 mil anyway, so I'm going to wick some bearing mounts down there once that shoulder's turned back another 10 or 12 mil. And uh, that's my double bearing. I wasn't anticipating it, but as someone suggested, it's good to stop any excess deflection in that shaft, particularly if you start getting deflection between both yokes it could cause a, a wiggle wobble and uh, it'll just flog the crap out of that centre bearing because remember this shaft suspended between two rubber couplings that one and the one on the on the um, pump so yeah double bearings a good idea and that's why we've got the extra bell housing this end here will not have a retainer or anything it might have just have a wave washer I might take the wave washer from that end and stuff it in this end and, um, oh, sorry, that end. There's supposed to be a wave washer in there. And um, a minimal amount of bearing mount just to stop them spinning in the outers because that one certainly does move in the, its outer. This one here's not so bad. That'll just push in nicely. Assuming I don't get it stuck. I almost have to heat up the outer and drop it in. Well, drop the shaft in anyway. It'll be a case of shaft goes in, coupling goes on the on the inside for the pump, then we work on fitting this. So I just heat the outside of that up with the torch and drop it on and bolt it in and away it goes. It's done. Very good. So yeah, that's about it at the moment. We've got drills, we've got bearings, I've got my RAV4 back. Let's have a look at uh, a bit more work on this one. Starting with, I think cut key and make sure coupling fits then eventually before I couple the whole lot up I'll make new rubber washers but for now I just want to get the um, the bell housings and everything sorted out make the um, the drive coupling work okay well that's what the drive unit looks like I've taken that bearing and just quickly turned the um, step down uh, that was last night when I finished it and now I have to uh, take it apart again I set it all in there with a bit of bearing mount. This isn't tight at the moment, but uh, it should work quite well. I don't have anything big enough to make a um, a mounting spigot for the uh, or a lining bush for the two halves, but they're close enough. It'll do. Then I've got to look at mounting the flanges and everything on it and actually put it together. It'll be a detachable drive unit essentially. I just unbolt the whole thing and it comes off. It's like a motor without the stator, which is all it is. Um, yeah, it'll work really well. Get a coat of paint, 
paint it different to the rest of the unit, like all oh, that could be black or grey or something like that, machinery grey. It'll come up looking pretty schmick. I like it. Oh, well, I guess I better undo it. I'm going to do the full assembly, I think. Okay, well there you go, that's the double bearing shaft. Um, I did clean a little burr off that housing and it does drop in just like this one, so they're both going to need a minimal amount of bearing mount compound. Um, even just spinning it by hand I can hear this one turning in its uh, housing so that's not going to be good if it does it fast. It'll weld itself in there. Um, it'll stop it spinning but it just might, might possibly make it more difficult to extract. Either way a bit of bearing mount will help if it does jam itself in there well who cares. Put the whole assembly in an oven for a bit and pop it apart. That's all you need to release something like that. It's just heat. Heat it right up. Even hit the um, base of the shaft with a bit of, um, well you couldn't actually, but you can uh, heat and then freeze things to get them apart. Like to get that bearing off I'd have to uh, heat the uh, outer race and then cool the shaft down very quickly and it'll just drop off. But anyway, onward. Okay, well while that sets up and lock tight, um, well, it should have pretty much be done by now, but I figured I'd uh, strip this down and to cut the uh, damaged portion of the thread off just to get these nuts out without any hassle. There's still more than enough for the nylock to engage and I'll just get replacement nuts, which I should already have. They look like M10, so it's either M10 or maybe 3.8, that sort of thing. Pretty easy. I'll uh, redo that shortly. I need to uh, work on some conveyor belt material, either use the uh, a little edge off, strip off the edge of my uh, work mat out there which is about 18mm thick, 19mm thick or maybe uh, go shopping and get some uh, off cuts from a local supplier where well, they should generally just give them away but who knows I just want a few rubbishy conveyor belt off cuts, maybe 10 to 12mm thick so I could stack, yeah probably two 12s I don't know, I'll work out an optimal thickness to cut up and punch out I'll machine a punch just out of a bit of steel tubing and should be good. Anyway, keep on going, clean these couplings up, give them a good paint and uh, eventually paint that, hopefully tonight. So once that's painted that'll be ready to go. Okay, well while the uh, paint on the couplings dries I figured I'd take the top off this and start cleaning it up, get some of this uh, Blue Max off it. It's a Loctite product actually. Um, someone asked me what Blue Max is and it's a... Um, I don't think I have a tube of it at the moment. I've got Copper Max and it's a uh, just an RTV silicone. It's good for water pumps and things like that. Copper Max is better. I think Blue Max is... Um, I think it might have aluminium powder or something in it. But Copper Max is copper powder and it's quite good. It's higher temp. But as you can see the pump is fairly big. Like there's my hand by size comparison, it's big enough. Uh, I was trying to get the filter off but without dismantling half the bloody thing I can't get a uh, wrench in there. And it's only a gauze filter as someone pointed out. It's uh, easily cleaned and looking at it with the flashlight there are like two or three little chunks of Blue Max and other silicon stuck to it so I just flick them off and it's clean. <laughs> it's not a big deal. All the filtration's done on the return which is up in here. And that's a paper cartridge filter that I can just pull out and just take down to the local uh, hydraulics shop or even the trucky shop and uh, they should have one for their uh, PTO power units and things like that I guess. Um, there should be a million places around where I am to get pick up uh, standard filters for those housings because I see them on all kinds of power units. If you see that on the top cover that just means it has a uh, return filter on it. That's what that is. That goes back to tank, it's just regular low pressure return hose and uh, that's your um, feed from the valve that comes in there and it's your return fluid when the valve switches over and puts fluid out here it's taking fluid back through there and sending it back to the tank via the filter. Um, you get a better look at that valve there it's pressure relief by the looks of it, adjustable uh, there's also a pressure relief in there which dumps back to there. You can even see a big coil spring down inside that hole. So I'm guessing if pressure reaches critical it just dumps pressure through there. 
Yeah, this pump would be terrible outside of a case because it would just dump oil everywhere. You'd have to have a separate line for absolutely everything. So, I'm going to uh, keep this thing as sealed and clean as possible. I'll just give it a quick wash down with a bit of uh, mineral spirit. Wash all the sludge out of the bottom. There's a bit of sludge and a bit of water. I think a lot of the water got in when I cleaned it. It's the filler cap assembly wasn't screwed down tight so a lot of water would have gone in then I don't think it's been run with water in it I mean it would be pretty obvious if there'd been a lot of moisture in here there'd be a lot of rust and particularly on the lid where it could condense heat would allow heat would force water to condense but that lid's pretty much spotless and uh, yeah it'd be the coldest part of the machine as it cools down and you'd get droplets condensing on it and the whole thing would just be rusty but yeah, these screws were very loose and the gasket wasn't doing anything so that was allowing dust and I'm guessing that's why there's so much powdery wood dusty crap down in there that nasty looking mess looks like wood dust and hydraulic oil not very good for the pump but the gauze felt is good enough to keep most of it out and wood dust is not really abrasive enough to be a major issue I believe this came out of a working system and we can only find out <laughs> It'd be an awful shame if it was screwed, but let's hope not. I believe it was a completely working system when they got rid of it. So, onward. Clean this thing up a bit more. I'm going to have to hoist it up with the chain hoist, probably put a couple of eye bolts back here somewhere so that it can tilt back. And take a... Oh, no, it'd be back here, because the point where it has to take a dump is down here. Right there. I'll take that plug out again and dump as much as I can out even just pour some more hydraulic oil in there and swirl it around and you know the usual scrub your tank out kind of thing if you're trying to clean an open top fuel tank or oil tank just got to get in there and scrub up to your elbows in hydraulic oil the job ain't done till it's yeah all over your arms your chest in your hair everywhere down your legs it's fun working with the hydraulics you're covered with head to toe with the oil by the day but day's end but the job will be done nice and right and there we have it, the Green Energy Power Convertron, also known as a uh, intermediate shaft. And I'm getting messages. Hmm. Yes, it works. And, uh, well, it's pretty much finished. I just have to find the shaft key, or make another one. Because I seem to have lost the drive coupling shaft key. So, right now I'm just painting it. <laughs> as long as it's got a good coat of paint, it can go on... Uh, as soon as I make another key, it's only 10 mil key steel, so I know I've got a piece around somewhere, or I'll just get some from work or across the road. It's easy enough, and uh, yeah, it's done. Got to continue working on the uh, pump, clean all that up. I can't get the filter off without taking half the bloody return line and everything off, and it doesn't want to play games, so it's all right. There's only a couple of little globs of silicon stuck to it, and the rest of it's. Uh, clean. So I'm just going to flush the nuts out of the tank, just get all the crap out of it and uh, refill it, see how we go. Same with the uh, converter, just going to, uh, not converter, the uh, drive unit will uh, bolt it straight back up and go for it. I've also opened the bolt holes up to 10 mil, and uh, they're a nice close fit so everything's nice and tight. I got rid of the old 8 mil bolts in what was basically a 9.5 mil hole not very uh, well precise so whilst everything was centered I just drilled one hole at a time and replaced the bolt with a nicely fitting M10 and locking nut and uh, yeah we're very good job done for now thanks for watching